February the 23rd. We have a lot to woohoo about this morning. Hey, Becca. Talking with the fact that it's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. Woo! Which is always good. Woohoo! We Indeed. also have an awesome lineup of stars As in the always, studio yes. this morning. Mm -hmm. And you and I have both been very busy publicizing our show, especially <laughs> in the last few days. Very true. What did you do last night? Uh, last night, I went to the MDA Ambassador first annual kickoff of the year. How cool is that? It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I think a little bit later we're going to have some video about it um, showing, you know, the new ambassadors and saying goodbye to last year's ambassadors. And it, this it station carries the multi uh, muscular dystrophy telethon. Yes, Labor Day. We yep. will have the telethon right here. Yep. So that's exciting. It is exciting. Got to MC. That's mm, awesome. See all, the, see all the kids. I did as well, and I was with a room full of very important business people downtown Excellent. in the Cool Yum Center, the Spirit Room, which overlooks the Ohio River. And there were there were hundreds and hundreds of business folks, and what we were doing was giving awards for construction of great new products like the Yum Center. Excellent. All of the flood protection, uh, O'Shea's, all the new buildings that have gone in. The Louisville Downtown Business Management District mm -hmm. gave awards for all of these great efforts, and it was just a, a super event. Very well attended, Good. very bright, and it said, see how downtown pops was the theme. Cute. And there were balloon sculptures everywhere, so it was really cool. That's cool, and I'm really glad that our downtown is popping yes. and growing, and it's a place that you actually want to go to and not just kind of dread a little bit. I said when I drove downtown on Friday night to do, or Saturday night to do McDazzle, I was mm -hmm. amazed at the number of people walking on the streets and a lot of activity. The Yum Center had something, you know, Actors was going, everybody yes. was working, busy, the restaurants were overflowing, and it's so nice to see downtown going again. And speaking of McDazzle, we have your on location That's within right. focus today. and. Um, I think somebody makes a special appearance, has a red red hair. That's right. It was red tie optional <laughs> after all. Um, Peter Moscow is here to talk to us about our diets, junk food, and oh. how it can really lower your IQ. He's going to tell me what I ate this morning. Probably wasn't the best idea. <laughs> <laughs> and Republic Bank and Brookstone Financial also on mm -hmm. deck. We also have with us today someone who has made it to the top. He's in Literally. National <laughs> Geographic, <laughs> and we are so excited about uh, meeting him because literally there's a whole fantastic spread about how he circled Alaska in 176 days. Andrew Skirka is with us. He's an extreme trekker, adventurer, yes. athlete, speaker, guide, writer. Welcome, Andrew. Oh, thanks for having me. And Did also, you miss anything uh, on I, the title there? <laughs> and all around nice guy. It's a pretty guy. good introduction. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's the, I think, the one my mom would be most proud of. Yes. Absolutely. And yeah. Tim Barnes, who manages the trail store. Welcome, Tim. Hey, thank you. Tim has actually uh, arranged with Andrew last night and tonight to do presentations about his 40 nearly 4,700 mile track. Holy moly. Let's put that into perspective. If you started in LA, walked all the way across the United States and yep. swam into the Atlantic halfway, you'd be going about 4,700 miles. If you made it halfway across the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> exactly. but, I, but I'm not Michael it. Phelps, so I think <laughs> I'd probably be calling in, uh, yeah, I'm kind of done with this. Yeah, yeah you're, not, me up. you're not Tori Murden either, but we have our own fabulous adventure here. That's what I've heard, yeah. Yes, and yeah. she rode across the Atlantic, so she would probably right. love to have a conversation with you. Would, would love to talk to her, yeah. We always... Well, she's at Spalding, so you can look her up okay. while you're here. Andrew's based in Colorado, but he's in Louisville for this special event. You're going to Cleveland next. Yep, going to Cleveland tomorrow. And tell us what you talk about in your presentations. So the uh, presentation I gave last night was mostly about my uh, Alaska Yukon trip. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it was, went about uh, maybe 75 minutes. We had some great Q&A after that. And I then bet. Tonight's presentation will be all about gear. So the, the folks who are looking for more than just the, the inspirational story, they're looking more for the technical know-how. Uh, this is the presentation for them. So they can try to do it too. <laughs> or something, or, get a little, or, or maybe or just, maybe just go or to maybe, Rough River right, maybe, or, right, or, or, or Shen Shenandoah <laughs> National Park. Yes. And, yeah, I think we're you know, Bernheim Forest I'd, possibly. Yes. Right, definitely try to keep um, you know orient or uh, give the presentation to uh, people who are just beginning and like be beginners and intermediates. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, well we have a picture here. Oh, it's describe so what's going on in this picture. So this, this photo here was taken in April up in the Alaska Range, which is uh, not very far from Mount McKinley, which is the highest peak in the Northeast, and mm -hmm. it was the it was the springtime, and obviously the, the rivers are starting to open up a little Melting. bit. Yeah, so it was, but it was still really cold. I think probably when that photo was taken, it was probably 20, 25 degrees, and wow. which creates this problem of you know the temperatures are freezing, but uh, you know there's still open water. So and your feet getting the wet. Feet were getting pretty wet. Yeah. And you talk about how hard it was to put those icy boots on every morning. Right. Like the, that was one of the throughout the springtime. That was definitely one of the big problems. Is um, my my feet would get wet, and my boots would get wet every single day from the river fords or from um, uh, from 
just the snowpack, and then yes. in the morning I would have to put my shoes back on after they froze over at night. Tim, I want wow. you to talk for a minute about yeah. the kind of weight that he had to carry when he was making this 4,679 mile trek. Whew. That's well, a I mean, weight-wise, it's really uh, you know Andrew's thing. I know what brought my attention to Andrew to, to begin with was uh, the fact that he that he does do these amazing treks with very little Absolutely. and such little, light weight. Absolutely, an example right in front of you. I mean, this is you know uh, the modern day sort of a sleeping bag about the size of a Nerf football. Your wow. 40, forty degree um, uh, sleeping bag. Yeah. How much does it weigh? That. Oh my gosh. Feel. Almost no, weightless. Whole. But I mean, and that's this a is, tent. And then this, this is a <laughs> single person tent. <laughs> Isn't that cool, Becca? Yeah. That is neat. Maybe add this for some poles, but that's not okay. really even that heavy. Very lightweight poles as well. So okay. you've got these things, and then you've got to carry some food with you. Yep, I end up carrying about two days of food. Holy two, days. I'm sorry, two, two pounds of food per day. Two pounds of food yeah. per day. Now, yeah. did you run into humans on this adventure, not or was it mostly human? bears? <laughs> not, not many. Didn't, didn't see many humans. I mean, basically, whenever I was in town, I would see humans, and then, uh, and then. In between the town stops, there was no nothing. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you go through courses to help protect you from animals of sorts, or is, or is experience? I think I it's, yeah, it's mostly experience. Okay. Yeah. How yeah. close did you ever get to a bear? The closest I got to a bear <laughs> was uh, probably about tw close. about twenty feet. <laughs> oh yeah. my so goodness! That's and close this was a, that was actually a, that was a pretty scary encounter because I ended up um, like by the time I saw the bear, it was. Like it was charging full bore at me, and oh, um, great. and that's and that's kind of the way that that's kind of the way that they start um, their encounter with a with anything, whether it be a caribou or a moose. They they charge to see what the animal is going, what the what this potential prey is going to do, and then uh, so by the time I saw it, it was so close that I actually threw my trekking pole at it and started and started screaming at it, and it and it was so uh, scared by me throwing like like projectiles coming at it and this loud voice that it actually ran away, like took a ninety degree turn, ran away, and as it Ran away. It actually, uh, uh, it, um, it had an been, accident. Yeah, it kind of had an accident. <laughs> actually, oh, wow. Yeah, so. We had a wallaby yeah. on the show not too long ago that had, had an, accident an accident right there where Tim's sitting on the desk. <laughs> but we've cleaned it. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you said back off, Yogi, and the bear turned yeah, around so and ran. Oh my it God. wasn't quite that easy, but um, it's yeah something on that order. Tim, that tent, Andrew says, is yeah. absolute extraordinary accommodations. He would never have been so lucky as to have that big of a place to live. It is a two person. Trip. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is built for two people. Room for and, him uh, and the bear. But uh, again, Andrew is is the uh, is the extreme. Yes, and, he is. Uh, and but what this is is that an opportunity for people to uh, get into a tent that's uh, like again, like I said, two person, but very lightweight, coming up four pounds. Yeah, and, that kayak uh, is nothing. I mean, when you, when I lifted it, I was surprised. There's very little weight involved in your kayak. So how much how much use did you get out of that little boat? The um, quite a bit. I think I ended up being about 1,200 miles of wow. sitting sitting in a boat just like that. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. And there's a little backpack. Yours is probably a bit larger than that. Uh, yeah, but not not very much. Not a little a little bit bigger, but maybe maybe about a uh, maybe thirty percent bigger. And you okay. carried how much weight with you every day? Because you started your trek in March, and here's some video of your your stuff. Oh right, yeah. And That's, the uh, mosquitoes. Ooh. Those are actually, those are black flies. Okay, black, uh, black flies. Yeah, but the mosquitoes were just about as bad. Ooh, and yeah. so you're wearing that to protect your face. Correct. What about the rest of your body? Deep. <laughs> <laughs> We know it well. Copious amounts of deep. Yes, yeah. those of us who hike a lot with our dogs in forests around this area use mm -hmm. a lot of deep. Um, Weight-wise, you were saying during the summer, starting in March, you were what at the at the North so, Pole, right? Yeah, I was 30 miles north of the Arctic Circle when I began in March, mm -hmm. and I had my pack weighed about uh, 16 or 17 pounds without food and water. Wow! And then I would add another two pounds of food per day. Um, and then I, I rarely actually, I rarely had to carry water because water is snow you know, it's, well, and it's in you know abundant supply in Alaska. Uh, yes, I would so imagine. Usually, so. usually the shortage of water is not the problem in Alaska. Excellent. Okay, now talk about this this photograph. What are we looking at here? So that that photograph there is on the Copper River, which is one of the most famous rivers in in Alaska. A lot of people have heard of the Copper River red mm -hmm. salmon. Yes. Uh, and I when I floated the Copper, it was the end of May, and the Copper River cuts right through the Chugach Range. Amazing. And it. Um, That's beautiful. And. Uh, it, uh, when, I, when I was still there, it was still fro the, there was a lake in the middle of the river, and it was still frozen over at the uh. end of May. So that's why I was scooting, scooting myself across my pack raft. <laughs> Tim, you guys wow. at the Trail Store have done us a great service. Talk to us about Andrew's presentation tonight. 
Well, tonight it's all about um, lightweight uh, backpacking, cool. uh, ways that people can uh, shave off uh, ounces, even pounds, on what they're taking. Also, you know, sort of leaving at home the things that they really probably don't need. You know, don't bring the kitchen sink. Exactly. You're, uh, it's always good. And you can hear out. more about the six month trek, which is a fantastic treat. Um, it's being held at Westport Village. It only costs $15. It's tonight from 7 to 9 p.m. And this backpacking clinic is great for beginners and advanced hikers alike, right, Andrew? I would agree, yeah. Wonderful. Come on out. All right, so Tim, anytime we need outdoor stuff, we know where to go to the trail store in Absolutely. Westport Village. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Anytime we need advice from an expert, we call Andrew. <laughs> so you're on Facebook, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm Excellent. on Facebook. Or, right. yeah, shoot me an email. Be, be happy to help you. Find him on Facebook and be his friend Whew. and talk about all the fantastic things that he's accomplished. Do you mind me asking how old you are? I'm 29. 29, 29 years of it, and I thought wow. I was doing well just getting up and going to the Heiser Clinic every morning and working out. He's going 4,700 miles. I'm putting me to shame, that's for sure. <laughs> I feel bad for pressing that snooze this morning. And I'll tell you how you meet excellent interview candidates. You go to the dog park and you strike up a conversation. You find an employee who works at the trail store and he tells you about this adventurer who's in National Geographic. Wow. And I say, come on my show. Yeah. Awesome. Thank well, you so much. Th thanks for having me. It's been what fun. What a blessing. All right. You guys yeah, have a great you. day. We have more coming up from Brookstone Financial. Mm -hmm. Also Republic Bank. Mm -hmm. We're going to tell you how to win those Lady Gaga tickets we've been talking about. Also Carl Casper tickets. Ooh, and Peter Moss is here to talk to us about our diets. He wants to get us back on the right track with healthy food. And don't forget tonight you can hear Andrew Skirka speak about his trip at the trail store in Westport Village. More Starts little live coming up.